So you've assembled your loom by choosing the stretcher bars, spacer bars that correlate with what size bracelet you want to make. This is a seven and a half inch. And you slot them into the sockets on your end pieces. Elastics hold it together. And you've chosen your easement bar that correlates with what size beads you're going to be using. I have a medium size easement bar because I'll be using four millimeter fire polish in my bracelet. To assemble a bracelet using the endless loom and a clasp, you need to make two starter pieces. The first one is two rows of whatever beads you're going to be using in your project. In this instance, we're working this pattern, which is uh, offered with the loom. And it, the first two rows are four fire polish, four four millimeter fire polish in rows of two. On this side, you completely finish off the starter piece. No working thread, no tail thread after you attach it to the clasp. On this side, you've pre-measured four wraps around the loom for the warp threads and an additional 12 to 14 wraps to give you enough working thread. So now you're prepared after you attach it to the other half of the clasp with the tail leaving the long working thread free. Pick up your loom with a finger on either side of the spacer bars like this and your non-dominant thumb free to grasp. Place the starter piece on the loom and put your thumb on the clasp because you want access to both sides, the beads on both sides. I place the working thread on the right hand side on the bottom so when I come around the loom to the top I'm going to pass right to left through the outermost bead on the right hand side. And that's our first warp. This is why we call it stitching the loom rather than warping the loom. Now that I'm on the upper starter piece. I go over the loom, back under, and now we're going to pass through the next two fire polish because we need to leave a larger gap in the center for the large honeycomb beads. Draw your thread through. You don't have to worry too much about tension at this point. Since the beads are going through, the excuse me, the thread is going through beads, it slides nicely at the end and you can tighten them all up at once. So the thread is exiting the third bead from the right. It's on the lower one so I go under the loom back around the top. Remember to skip the two in the center and pass through the last fire polish. See I get tangly too. All right. So then the last pass goes over and around and under. Now there's no bead to go through at this point. You're going to join onto the beadwork by passing under this thread that lies between the first and second row. But before I do that, I'm gonna place my thumb on the bottom starter piece and give it a nice tug. And that'll tighten up all the threads. Now place your thumb on the working thread to maintain the tension. Pass under that thread that lies between the two. Draw it through tight. Again hold the tension and pass under that thread again and tie a half hitch knot by going through the loop. And do that twice. And draw the loop tight. Okay, so now your beadwork can be shifted forward to put the weaving thread in the proper position over the weaving area. 
you're now ready to begin weaving what was your warping thread now is your weaving thread now working with two whole beads is a little different we're going to string the first row well sometimes it's easier to put your thread under to begin with so I passed under this set of warp threads I'll string a fire polish a true two sparkly little guys and one hole on the honeycomb another true two and another fire polish now that's our, my first row I allow the beads to slide down and under the threads now the fire polish goes between the outer warps it goes into this area right here and right here so the center part is occupied by both the honeycomb and the two true twos I hold it up see how I'm holding the loom with these bottom three fingers my thumb is on the end bar so my finger is free to push upwards on those beads in the first row now I'll pass back over the warp threads on the return make sure I go through that true two through the honeycomb through the next true two sometimes if you want you can make it a two-part pass if they're not lining up for you there we go so you push them up together now you're ready for your second row you're going to have to catch this on the return path so you first string two beads one is the fire polish one is the true two and you pass them underneath if you tuck the honeycomb down you can pick it up down here on your pass under all right so now I've got a fire polish a true two and I've gone through the second hole on my honeycomb to finish this row I need to string a true two and a four millimeter and I allow them to slide down okay and once again I put my non-dominant forefinger underneath the beads to push them upwards so I can pass back over the warps through all the holes and pull to secure now you can see this is not flopping down so everything has gone as planned so then you would pass under and you're ready to start the next row as you weave this weaving area as you add more beads this weaving area fills up with beads so in order to bring more open warp into the area you simply slide your bracelet forward until you have more open warps in the weaving area now eventually the beads will take up this extra Base allotted by the easement bar you can either uh, insert a smaller easement bar or remove the easement bar altogether as you load up the loom with beads once you reach all the way around you'll get back to where you started two situations will arise you'll have enough room to do a whole unit with the honeycomb bead don't force it if you force it the beads will buckle up what's the best thing to do is to remove it from the loom and allow it to rest because the thread has been under tension don't tie off your working thread yet let the bracelet rest for a good half hour and then see if there's room for a whole honeycomb two passes if there's not then just use another row of four four millimeter beads nobody will even see it it's better to have a little bit of gap left where you can massage the beads to take up the gap than it is to force an extra row in because you don't want that buckling effect 
And once again, when you come all the way around, you tie off your one weaving thread, hide it in the beads, and you slide off a finished bracelet. If you have any questions, email me at beadpatterns at AOL or visit 